Hi everyone. Uh, there is uh, many times that I need uh, boxes or enclosures for uh, electronic parts or a battery box or something else. And well, uh, the standard boxes, sometimes I don't like them. They are very uh, bulky or heavy or they're even not, uh, not nice, or the sizes do not fit what exactly I need. So I decided to design um, a customizable box that you can uh, print different uh, modular parts that can join together in different positions. So uh, to make uh, different sizes of boxes and, and shapes, you know. So let me explain you how I designed it and just uh, print it and how you can make your um, your boxes perfectly. To design parts, I always use the, this program, which is called OnSave, which is actually free for hobbyists. And you can use it to create any kind of uh, part and then download it on STL format in, to be used on 3D printers uh, easily. Okay, the first things I did for this design is to define a variable, which is the, the wall thickness of the enclosure, which is going to be 3.5 millimeters because it's uh, very easy to find these uh, material, materials with this uh, thickness. And you can use uh, with this uh, thickness uh, materials from 3 to 3.5 millimeters and they will fit perfectly on these uh, parts. Okay, the first thing I did was one sketch in all, with the shape of the uh, of the of the profile that I that I want. Okay, here you can see how it's the face of the of the edge. And after this is uh, designed, then I you can just uh, extrude this sketch on different lengths in order to create the first uh, parts. Uh, this sketch has a little point here, which is going to be where we are going to make a hole that traspasses all the edges in order to uh, use a screw that you can screw them together or you can use pegs to align them just uh, in between them or with the corners. So I stood at different times on different lengths so we can have different uh, edge sizes. Uh, this, this is from 50 millimeters to 300 millimeters length which uh, will fit almost all the printed uh, beds that you can find usually in the market. As well, you can just uh, choose any of the extruders and change the length of the extrude to make it uh, the exact length that you need for your application. For example, this one is now 200 millimeters. You change it to 235 uh, millimeters and we'll make this uh, part and this exact length that it's needed for your project. Okay. So it's easy to modify here on on this uh, design the length of the of the edges. Okay, so let's do an undo to keep it right. Then uh, I wanted as well one edge that it was curved. So well, first I made a hole here that traspasses all the parts. You can see here it's a 2.5 millimeters hole. So all the M3. Uh, screws will tap into here, strike into the plastic. Okay, like I said, uh, I wanted an edge that it was curved, so I decided to create a curved edge. To do so, I draw a new sketch with a curved line, which is this one you can see here. Okay, and I swept the same face of the first sketch, which is this one, through that line, and this is the result it gave me. Okay, we got, we got now a curved sketch, uh, sorry, a curved uh, edge for the, for our, for the boxes. Uh, I need to make as well holes in this part, but the holes in this part are slightly different because they need to be blind, not uh, transposed in the full part. So I just uh, draw the sketch here in order to make point where it's going to be made a hole and just made the holes. Like I said, in this case, they are blind holes. Like you can see here, like I say, it's a M3 screw. Okay, and tap it and with a 30, 20 millimeters length on depth. Okay, so we got 
all the edge already made. Now we need to make the corner. To make the corner, uh, it's a bit complicated, more complicated part. And I'm going to show you how I made it. Let me hide all the parts so we can see better. We can hide this sketch and this other one. Okay, so we have this first sketch. And what I did is copy that same sketch on three orthogonal plans. Okay, so we got these three sketches on these parts in order to create a corner. I extruded all of these three sketches. Okay, like you can see here, I extruded this first one. Okay, <clears throat> this side up to the end of the corner. Okay, and a little bit longer in the other side. Okay, so I extruded this first uh, sketch, then the second one, and the third one. And we already have a part that looks like a corner. Okay, what I did next was to cut the parts from that corner that we do not need. Let me hide the sketches. Okay, so you see there's uh, parts like this that we do not need for, uh, for the design. So I used this plane here, this face of the part, in order to use in order to make the guidance for the cut. Okay, and I use the split command to split the part in two. This is the one that we need, and this is the one that we don't need. This one is the one that we do not need. So I just deleted the part that we do not need. It's not necessary to delete the part, but I made it to uh, make it easier for um, working on the, on the document. So I split it on the on the other one and deleted the part again and and again did it again on the other corner okay so as well there is we need to make holes in order to match the holes that we made in the profiles in these faces in this area so but these holes i want to make them uh counterboard so they can hide the um <clears throat> they can hide the head of the of the screw uh, so I started to prepare the the surface. Well, I made a plane here. Uh, this plane is created using these three points, and use the plane in order to split again the piece in two parts. This one and this one, and deleted the one that we do not need, which is that one. Then I created sketches where the holes are going to be. Okay, going to be placed. Okay, this uh, we're gonna make a hole here in this position, transpacing the part uh, in perpendicular direction to the screen. So I just place the holes here. I need to make these new sketches because if I use the sketch here, the hole will start from here and the pocket for the for the head of the screw will be on the wrong side. So as you can see here, now we create the hole and we have the hole for the for the screw. Okay, this hole is like I said a counterbore hole, okay, that will hide the head of the screw. It will be inserted in that hole. You can just define the diameter of the hole, the diameter of the pocket and the length of the of the hole. And I did the same for the three ways that we need that hole. And this is the end result. We have uh, three holes in order to screw the straight edges, the edges of the boxes to the corners. Then I just made a fillet in order to round some corners. As you can see, I just rounded a little bit these corners to make it look nicer and rounded a little bit here in order to let the screws uh, fit inside better. Now I created another part. Uh, using the same part, I just created a second one, which is exactly the same as the first one. I used the transform command. The transform command is just copy in place. It just creates you a second part, which is exactly the same as the, as the first one, okay, in order that you can modify this second, second part or the first one. Okay, now, so we have now two parts. One is the gray one and the other one is this uh, green one. The And then 
because I thought that I'm sure that we're gonna need I'm gonna need uh, and actually the box I'm gonna uh, assembly later it's um, it's gonna use this kind of corners is it what I did is to the standard part which is this high I just move this face down to here in order to make it smaller and to make it a bit different to be used in some other kind of boxes. Okay, so we have all the parts now in order to create our boxes. I made two cluster of, uh, of parts. This is the large uh, parts which can be used for uh, boxes, let's say from 200 millimeters in length or something like that, and, you know, for big boxes. And another cluster of parts, which is this one, which is the mini size, which is for smaller, smaller boxes. You will use less material on the printer and so on. Uh, <clears throat> and this is, I created three assemblies here just only to show how they can be uh, they can be matched together all of these parts. This is just a standard uh, box and this is another kind of box using the curved profiles and here's another one. As you can see the the, the possibilities are endless with this kind of, uh, of parts and modulus that you can use. And in these uh, gaps here you can fit inside the panels that enclose the, the boxes. Now I'm going to print uh, a couple of parts, one straight edge and one corner in order to see if everything fits properly and if there's any problem just to modify the tolerances and so on. Now it's turn to print some samples in order to check if everything uh, fits properly and the tolerances are correct. I already printed the first two sample parts Okay, I uh, had some problem on printing. My idea is that the corners uh, should print uh, in this position on the on the bed, but uh, the surface of this face is very small, and even with adding a, a brim like I did here, they disattach and from the bed, so it fails a couple of times. So I have to repeat it, and at the end, this piece have to be. Um, printed in this position, well it can be printed on any position on the flat faces because it's designed to be printed without uh, supports. Okay, These uh, parts, the edges with the corners can be attached with uh, glue. Uh, these parts are uh, printed on PLA so we can use for example epoxy or cyanocrylate or as well PVC glue which works really well with um, PLA as well. Okay, and uh, as designed, we can uh, use a screws well to, to, to mount them. So the screws just mount directly in the holes. There is no need to make a, a tap in the, in the parts as the same plastic makes um, taps in, the screw taps into the plastic directly without a problem. And the result is a very strong uh, junction. For the box uh, faces that uh, will enter in these uh, uh, gaps here, we can use uh, many kind of uh, materials. Uh, I actually recommend uh, this uh, corrugated uh, polypropylene plastic. Uh, you can find it in different colors. It's very cheap and very sturdy, okay, and it fits perfectly on the on the gap. Uh, and actually. It enters with a bit of force, so it's not necessary to glue it. But we can glue it uh, easily if we use one of those uh, uh, hot glue guns here and to put it on there. So it will make a really, really strong joint for the for the box. As well, we can use different all the different materials, like this kind of uh, wood board that uh, fits here, and actually the box will look quite nice with this kind of, of, of board. Okay, you can use uh, any kind of other kind of plywood like this one that will fit into, into the gap, or you can use uh, um, P, transparent PC or colored PC here, making very, very strong and, and open boxes. And as well, you can use, this is PVC foam as well of uh, three millimeters, which fits perfectly here. So any kind of material between 3 to 3.5 millimeters will fit perfectly here. Let's assemble the box.
is all. Here is the box. In this case, uh, I want to use it uh, to put a screen inside and some other components. So, hope you like it.